So how did anesthesia develop? Well, it's all thanks to the dentists. Doctors can't uh, take any credit for it. Prior to 1846, there was no known way to provide anesthesia to those undergoing surgery. The whole process of surgery was extraordinarily painful, bloody and dirty. Surgeons were praised for the speed, not skill, in their com successful completions of operations. Surgical procedures were either, either very superficial, drainage of abscesses or removal of small skin lesions, or major, amputations of limbs, cesarean section, all without any anesthesia. The Massachusetts General Hospital, uh, at the time that this whole event uh, occurs, was the busiest surgical site in North America. It provided surgical procedures to an average of five patients a week. After 19, 1846, after 1846, longer, more complex surgical procedures developed and the field of surgery exploded. Now over 100 procedures are done at Massachusetts General Hospital a day and new surgical procedures are being developed at a very rapid pace. So the first dentist we're going to talk about is Dr. Horace Wells. He's the real father of anesthesiology, although the term's been used uh, on many individuals. Yes, he was a dentist. In 1844, he went to a party. It was a nitrous oxide party where people gathered, uh, enjoyed themselves, and uh, breathed nitrous oxide, usually out of a big paper bag. And one of the things he noticed was a woman smashed her leg very hard against a bench and ended up with a large laceration on her leg, which should have been extremely painful. She had no sense of pain whatsoever from it. And from this observation, he then went about using nitrous oxide in his dental practice. He had his, his own tooth extracted under nitrous oxide anesthesia and had very little discomfort. And in 1845, he demonstrated nitrous oxide for surgical anesthesia at the Massachusetts General Hospital. Unfortunately, as you're going to learn in this course, nitrous oxide is not a strong anesthetic and it was a dismal failure. And he was shamed before all the physicians in Massachusetts and the dentists. Nitrous oxide provides good analgesia, good pain control, but cannot provide full anesthesia. So the patient cried out during the surgery, Wells was humiliated, and he ultimately committed suicide. This was a typical advertisement in those days for a, a, a laughing gas party, nitrous oxide party. So you can see, laugh, sing, dance, speak or fight, all those wonderful things you could do with nitrous oxide on board. So the next dentist to come along was Dr. William Morton, also in Massachusetts. He had actually been predated by Dr. Crawford Long in Great Britain, who did do surgery under uh, ether anesthesia, but didn't bother publishing his results. So the first described and known event in general anesthesia occurred on October 16, 1845. Dr. Morton provided anesthesia to a young man having a tumor removed from his neck under ether anesthesia. And the chief surgeon turned to the crowd in the room and said, in the very pompous way of that Victorian era, gentlemen, this is no humbug. And Morton's uh, name was made. Morton was a bit of a scamp, unfortunately, and uh, he tried to uh, make more out of this than, uh, than uh, he was able to by coloring ether orange and then trying to patent it as orange ether, claiming it was superior to regular ether that had actually been around as a solvent and cleaning agent for centuries. So this is a, a, a painting of that first event, and uh, this is from uh, 1845 at the Massachusetts General. This operating room is still uh, in existence, and you can visit it if you wish. But you can see how very different the world was then than it is now. All these people gathered around the uh, operating room table wearing street clothes. They may in fact be people right off the street because like uh, public executions, surgery was a popular spectator sport in the mid part of the 19th century. You can see uh, Wells, excuse me, Morton holding his bottle of ether and the surgeon working on the young man's neck. So that started general anesthesia for general surgery. 
But it was important to move beyond that to other areas of need. And the area that was likely to be missed in all of this was obstetrical anesthesia. Partly this was due to the biases of the era that said, you know, pain during labor was a required part of woman's uh, recompense for original sin. Well, there was a very powerful lady in existence in that era in Great Britain, that was Queen Victoria, and she wasn't willing to be punished for something that might have happened in the Garden of Eden. And with her uh, eighth child, she had 11, I believe, she asked Dr. John Snow, who was the first practicing anesthesiologist in Great Britain, to provide her with anesthesia. Snow's an interesting man, and for those of you who are aware of the uh, London pump cholera uh, uh, story, uh, he was, it's the same John Snow who discovered that pump and was able to prevent uh, a, a cholera uh, from spreading in London. And so in a way, he's the father of epidemiology and he's also one of the fathers of anesthesiology. Very amazing man. Anyway, after she delivered her baby, Queen Victoria said, Dr. Snow gave the blessed chloroform and the effect was soothing, quieting, and delightful beyond measure. And from that moment forward, obstetrical anesthesia had a solid place in medicine. So this is what it looked like to start with. This is a bottle of ether and a Schimmelbusch mask. And the bat mask is basically uh, just a wire mask that you laid some gauze over and you poured ether directly on the gauze and put the mask and gauze over the patient's face and they breathe the vapor. This is a modern anesthetic machine, a little bit fancier than the Schimmelbusch mask uh, much more sophisticated, full of very complex uh, warning systems and monitoring systems, which we'll discuss in more detail in a later lecture. You just completed your first video of the world's best medical exam preparation. Lecturio brings the knowledge of worldwide leading medical experts and teaching award winners to your PC, tablet, or smartphone. Prepare yourself and check your progress with thousands of quiz questions, customized to US MLE standards. And the very best, you can get in touch with our medical experts personally. Visit Lecturio.com now and continue with the most inspiring medical education around the globe, anytime, anywhere.